hydrogen uh, fuel cell and electric vehicles. When I say EVs, I say battery electric, like a Tesla, right? Um, they're both in usually the clean car lists, the zero emissions list. Uh, I want to show four things, four dimensions, um, to, to basically compare and contrast a little bit. Production, infrastructure, architecture, and uh, energy efficiency. The first thing is that a lot of folks talk about hydrogen as being a source of energy. Um, hydrogen is not a source of energy, unless you consider the sun, right? But on Earth, hydrogen is a form of storage of energy. It's not a source. You need energy from other sources, like natural gas or coal or uranium or whatever, or the sun, um, to power a mechanism. There are a couple of mechanisms, like electrolysis or natural gas reforming, and I'll talk about these briefly, um, to extract the hydrogen from uh, either water or natural gas. Um, and so first thing to know is that hydrogen is a form of storage, not a source, okay? Um, so for instance, the methane reforming or natural gas reforming um, is the method that basically 95% of hydrogen in America comes from natural gas. So it's not clean, first of all, okay? 95% of hydrogen in America comes from natural gas. What you do with reforming is you add methane, natural gas, and water, you heat it up, and boom, you produce. Out comes hydrogen, you heat it up at 1,000 degrees centigrade, um, and you get three molecules of hydrogen. So that's one of the ways to do it. The other way is, which many might remember from high school chemistry, uh, electrolysis, very simple process. Water, electricity, bzz, you produce hydrogen and oxygen, right? Very simple, um, but again, you need to get energy from somewhere and you need a lot of water also. Two, hydrogen delivery infrastructure. So unless we're actually going to do this electrolysis at home, which most of us are not gonna do, the infrastructure that we need to have a hydrogen, um, you know, the, what, what's called the hydrogen economy, is basically like you need to mirror, more or less, the infrastructure that we have developed for oil and gas. You need refineries, you need production plants, you need pipelines to pipe it up from the big plants out there to the users in here. Um, so you need compressors and pipeline and compressors again and truck delivery and gas stations or in which case hydrogen station. So to do this, um, we need to replicate an infrastructure that has cost trillions of dollars. Several companies still, car companies still are doing hydrogen, are betting on hydrogen. When I asked them in their best estimates, how much is hydrogen going to cost at the pump, right? Assume everything else works and we have this infrastructure. How much is hydrogen going to cost at the pump the number that I've heard is $4, the equivalent of $4 a gallon, right? So the best case scenario is let's invest trillions to um, replicate the exact same infrastructure for the exact same price as gasoline today. Now, can we get breakthroughs? Everything is possible. But knowing what we know, the best case scenario is that we're gonna replicate the, the existing infrastructure. Three, um, it turns out that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles 
are electric vehicles. Okay? So hydrogen vehicles are electric vehicles. They have a compressed hydrogen tank that power a fuel cell and the fuel cell generates electricity that powers the electric motor. So it turns out that the major difference as far as the car itself between the EV and the hydrogen uh, vehicle is the difference between um, the storage mechanisms. So do we choose a battery, electric battery, or a hydrogen slash fuel cell? Does this make sense? So it turns out that at the end of the day, even if you ignore the whole infrastructure issue, um, let's make this comparison because maybe we should make a trillion dollar infrastructure uh, investment if this is more energy efficient than electricity. Does that make sense? Okay. If you start with, say, 100 kilowatt hours of um, renewable AC electricity, um, you can compare what an electric vehicle ends up using and what a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle ends up actually using. Okay, and you can look at this at home, but um, all the steps, electrolysis, liquefaction, transport, fuel cell, boom, we end from with a 19% efficient vehicle to 23% efficient vehicle. Now, does anyone remember what the efficiency is, energy efficiency of internal combustion engine vehicles? Less than 30. 17 to 21%, right? So again, it turns out that hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicles have pretty much the efficiency of an internal combustion engine vehicle. Whereas a, an electric vehicle um, has 70, 80, 90% efficiency. If you look at it from the economics or the technology point of view, I think this is a no-brainer. I think hydrogen is a non-starter. Uh, it truly is. Um, you know, in their best case scenario, they will mirror the existing oil and gas infrastructure. That's not disruptive, that's not even a winner. It's not even clean.